सुधा का कल्याण न भूले बंधन के आज के कार्यक्रम में आप सबका स्वागत है जी एक अभियंता हैं आपने दिल्ली टेक्नोलॉजिकल यूनिवर्सिटी से अपना सिविल इंजीनियरिंग की शिक्षा प्राप्त की तत्पश्चात आपने पर्यावरण इंजीनियरिंग में मास्टर्स डिग्री पाई है आपकी पहली पुस्तक द एजुकेशनल हेरिटेज ऑफ एंशंट इंडिया हाउ एन इकोसिस्टम ऑफ लर्निंग वाज लेड टू वेस्ट बहुत लोकप्रिय हुई संपूर्ण विश्व में ज्ञान का प्रसार भारत देश में भारत देश से कैसे हुआ यह सत्य का वर्णन ये पुस्तक करती हैं रिविजिटिंग द एजुकेशनल हेरिटेज ऑफ इंडिया ये दूसरी पुस्तक में भारत के गुरुकुल पद्धति का भी वर्णन किया गया है सिंगापुर में स्थलांतर होने के बाद आपने लेखन को करियर के तौर पर चुना आप एशियन वाटर मैगजीन की एडिटर रह चुकी हैं दो में डेल्फ यूनिवर्सिटी द्वारा आयोजित अर्बन वाटर मूवी कॉन्टेस्ट में आपके लघु चित्र फीत को प्रथम पुरस्कार प्राप्त हुआ था आपके लेख और स्तंभ प्रकाशित हुए हैं आप एक लेखक हैं एक स्तंभकार हैं इतिहास विद्यादान शिक्षा संस्कार क्षम वातावरण तथा हिंदू रेफ्यूजीज के लिए काम करने वाली कई संस्थाओं के साथ आप जुड़े हुए हैं अलग अलग समाज तथा सभ्यताओं का अभ्यास करने के लिए आप हमेशा उत्सुक रहती हैं मैं आपसे विनती करती हूं कि आज का कार्यक्रम शुरू धन्यवाद थैंक यू सो मच नमस्ते टू एवरीवन इट्स एब्सोल्युटली अ प्लेजर टू सी सो मेनी ऑफ यू बिकॉज टुडे बीइंग अ संडे यू कुड हैव गॉन टू सी अ मूवी यू कुड हैव जस्ट लेप्ट यू कुड हैव वॉच टीवी एट होम बट यू टुक द ट्रबल टू कम एंड लिसन टू टॉक ऑन इंडिया एजुकेशनल हेरिटेज सो आई एम वेरी वेरी टच Uh, i hope you don't mind if i use more english than hindi uh, i'll try to bring in hindi words but since the book is in english and i am a product of the modern education system which is tragic but that's what it is so <laughs> so i i'll i'll be i'll try to bring in some hindi but my mother tongue is kannada by the way so if i speak in kannada you will have a problem i think most people wouldn't understand um i think i should stand and uh, because i have slides yeah 
so basically I'm, I have written a book which you can see there it's on India's uh, uh, educational heritage so what I want to tell you about that India had a very ancient system of formal education which was very formal and uh, it attracted students from around the world so when we today we have the system where we go to school we go to college then we specialize in higher subjects this is not something that has just happened overnight this has developed over thousands of years and it has started in India and then it spread to the other parts of India uh, other parts of the world so that is what I have tried to give you evidence in the book to show you all that so um, this I think I'll just move this way the speciality about Indian education was that nature was also considered an important teacher so there are numerous instances where the students in the middle of nature they are realizing the higher truths so you see the one very important aspect of India's education is that nature was at the center of it right it would be in the open it would be under a tree it would be near a river or even if it is in, inside a classroom there was always an awareness of that uh, the fact that we are a part of nature and we are not there to exploit it and use it we are not the masters here we are just one of the components of nature that was very very uh, important about our ancient Indian education so you know um, taking cows to graze bringing water from the well watching the night sky all this was a part of Indian education and I want to highlight the special relationship between the guru and the shishya there was this concept of guru runa so if you are a student and you have learned something from the guru then it's your duty to pass it on to the next generation otherwise you are dying in debt it's like a debt so this concept is so wonderful so unique so that when somebody is teaching that person is not teaching for salary or for money I mean money may come in but the real reason that teacher is teaching is that he is discharging the debt he's he knows that if he dies without passing on his knowledge or her knowledge then it's actually a crime so that was the thinking next so we must understand that there was enormous value attached to education so every person in this country in this land knew the importance of education so they knew that uh, that if they have children they need to send them to school uh, they must do everything possible to give their child an education even the poorest of the poor knew this and there were important uh, ceremonies important rites of passage jisme ki wo jo dikhata hai hame ki education kitna important tha kyunki agar wo ceremony nahi hote then you know it we would not have known it the ceremony shows to you that it is important right if you have you have the uh, vidya rambha so the first time that a child learns to write the alphabet to wo usko bhi ek function ke roop mein manaya jata tha logo ko bulate the ye dekho mera bachcha aaj pehli baar likhne wala hai ya likhne wali hai that that was called vidya rambha aaj kal shayad zyada log manate nahi hai lekin jo manate hain wo abhi bhi karte hain akshar abhyasa vidya rambha okay then upanayana upanayana was another ceremony jisme uh, the, the child is now going into higher education so that was there was between you know, seven years of age eight years of age that was a very important ceremony usme bhi bahut logo ko bulate the khana dete the aur aur ye celebrate karte the ki now my child is old enough to go for higher education phir ek aur ceremony tha jo aajkal jante hi nahi hai log hmm? samavartana that was the graduation ceremony so aaj aap uh, colleges mein dekhte hain jo graduation hai agar aap hamara graduation ceremony dekhenge samavartana you will think that ye aaj ka kuch bhi nahi hai because the way the chanting you know the kind of beautiful shlokas that are chanted which is which are reminding the child what is your duty in the world again the same thing the runa you have learned this you have to spread the knowledge spread the right knowledge it, there are so many things it is taken from taittiriya upanishad the whole chanting the sanskrit shlokas which are chanted during samavartana are telling the student uh, about how to learn and how to spread the knowledge uh, and then go to the next stage of life grihastha ashrama so there were no uh, artificial barriers between religion and science every subject was approached with a spirit of scientific inquiry as well as shraddha and there was no dissonance so there was no barrier that you know religion separate rakhna hai science separate rakhna hai one thing was leading to the other because you know when they were doing the homa and the havan they needed absolutely good uh, proper geometrical shapes to match ka knowledge hona tha religion ke liye match ka knowledge hona tha so it was not like you have to remove religion because our religion or hinduism is actually not a religion in the uh, in the abrahamic sense so our religion itself was science there was science there was arts there was everything in that right it was a way of life 
and there was a lot of experiential learning. So gurus did not answer the questions directly. Many times you will find it's not like question pucha or uska answer mil gaya. The guru will not answer the question but will make the student derive the answer. So then a guru will give him tasks to do, uh, you know, lead him on or her on until the answer is reached because the guru knew that that way the, pers the student will remember whatever has been, uh, whatever he learns or learns if he himself discovers it. Next, next slide. So here is a picture of uh, what I mentioned, uh, Vidya Rambha. So this is the Bengali style. It is called Hathi Khodi and the child is writing on the alphabet, uh, uh, on the blackboard, on the slate. And this is done during Saraswati Puja in Bengal. It's called Hathi Khodi. Next one. And this is a picture of Upanayana. Many, many of you must have attended or gone through it yourself. Next. And in my book, you'll find this map of India showing all the, you know, the universities and higher centers of learning that I came across during my research. And there are so many of them, almost a hundred of them that I could find. And I'm sure there are many more because some of them have not even been excavated. So you will find that uh, there are a cluster of university, universities in the eastern part of India. Nalanda ka naam suna hoga apne. Nalanda ke paas mein hi Vikram Shila, uh, Udantapura, Telhara, bhoot sari universities hain. फिर आप नॉर्थ में जाएंगे तो वहाँ पे शारदा पीठ है कश्मीर कश्मीर वैली में देर वाज अ वेरी वेल नोन यूनिवर्सिटी कॉल्ड शारदा पीठ एंड इन फैक्ट दैट होल लैंड वाज कॉल्ड शारदा देश बिकॉज़ शारदा यू नो सरस्वती द गॉडेस ऑफ लर्निंग एंड सो पीपल इट वाज नोन एज अ एज अ लैंड ऑफ लर्निंग शारदा देश and then there was the Takshashila, various others, Purushapura in the northern part of it, which is a lot of it is in Pakistan, which is tragic that when we lost that land, we also lost these ancient centers of learning. Unke ruins abhi bhi padhe hain pe. And then, you know, you have Vallabhi. You have Vallabhi in Gujarat, which was very famous for administration. So, you know, the parents who wanted their children to get government jobs, to work in the field of administration, wo Vallabhi mein bhejte the. Can you imagine? Such a long time back, when travel was so difficult, it was not that it was sitting on the plane, it was it was very difficult. Then they would go to study in Vallabhi, if they didn't have higher knowledge in the administration. And then when you come to the south, you have so many of them. Many of them were temple universities. Okay? You have Kanchipuram, you have Tiru, uh, Tiru Mudukkal, Ennairam, Kumban Konam, Nagapattinam, so many of them. You have in Karnataka, Gokarna, Udupi, all these, there are many, many more, and they were all different kinds of centers of learning. Some are like temples, because temples may be padhaya jata tha. Temples may sirf puja karne ke liye nahi jate the log. To ek bada sa hall bana hota tha waha pe, aur waha pe jo hai guru aake padhate the. To koi pa ka tarah tarah ke classes hote the. Aur isi tarah jase aaj mein talk dene aai hoon, waha par bhi koi agar shahar mein koi aaye hai, some scholar has come, they will say please come and deliver a talk. To wo temple mein hi hota tha. So temples were also centers of learning. And what I want to uh, tell you is that people used to travel a lot. Even though it was very difficult to travel, dur dur se log aate the, mar mar ke aate the. Lekin unko kai log aise hote the ke unko Nalanda mein hi padna hai. To Nalanda kisi tarah se pahunchte the. Like we have the Chinese students, Zhuang Zhang, itne mushkil se aaye ho. Hmm? And, uh, and aate the, fir then they would uh, copy the manuscripts physically and take it back. Because when they came from different countries, they had this responsibility that I will have to take this knowledge back to my country and help my country. So, many foreign students came. The. And they came from, you know, Western Asia, Iran, uh, even Greece. Then, the. in this way, Southeast Asia, there are many countries from there. They came from Vietnam, Cambodia. They came from China. You will get students from Mongolia in the universities. Mein they were, there is a mention of Mongolian students studying in uh, uh, Nalanda, Vikram Shila. Okay. And not just at South, maybe jate the padne ke liye. That in the South, there was a very well-known university, Kantalur Shala, Kerala mein. Kerala mein wo university ko Nalanda of the South kehte the matlab. It is, it had so many subjects. It was, it had more subjects than Nalanda. And martial arts also were taught. So you, so there were rules that you know after the kalari pai to class, martial art, you can't carry your swords and daggers to the next class. You have to keep it by safely. Because kai bar ladaiya ho jati thi between students, so they would say you can't carry weapons. So see, there were rules also, and different kinds of institutions. Those who wanted to learn martial arts would go travel to Kerala to learn. So ye sab tha. So that's what I was telling. Traveling was an important part of education, 
सो द यू नो दे वुड मेक द स्टूडेंट्स हु हैव जस्ट फिनिश्ड योर हायर एजुकेशन कि ट्रैवल करके आप अपना नॉलेज बढ़ाइए और आपने जो भी सीखा है वो थोड़ा प्रैक्टिस करके देखिए फॉर एग्जाम्पल नए नए जो डॉक्टर्स हैं वैद्य बने हैं आप ट्रैवल करिए और अलग अलग जगह में जाके ट्राई टू क्योर डिसीज एंड सी हाउ वॉट यू वेदर यू कैन अप्लाई वॉट यू हैव लर्न सो ट्रैवलिंग वॉज अ पार्ट द एजुकेशनल टूअर्स वर अ पार्ट ऑफ एजुकेशन वल्लभी यूनिवर्सिटी इन गुजरात वॉज सेटअप बाई नालंदा प्रोफेसर्स सो नालंदा में प्रोफेसर्स जो है वल्लभी से आके उन्होंने क्या कहते हैं सॉरी वल्लभी वॉज सेटअप बाई नालंदा प्रोफेसर्स और नालंदा में साउथ इंडिया कश्मीर अलग अलग जगह से आते थे पढ़ने के लिए द गोल्डन पीरियड ऑफ द फेमस मिथिला यूनिवर्सिटी दिस इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग बिहार में जो मिथिला यूनिवर्सिटी है ये मैंने अभी रिसेंटली पढ़ा दैट इट बिकेम मोस्ट फेमस ड्यूरिंग द रूल ऑफ द कर्नाटक डायनेस्टी स्टार्टिंग विथ नानिया देवा सो कर्नाटका दिज अ पर्सन फ्रॉम कर्नाटका गोज टू बिहार सेट्स अप अ यूनिवर्सिटी मिथिला यूनिवर्सिटी एंड वहाँ पे मैथिली लैंग्वेज इज बींग पॉपुलराइज कैन यू इमेजिन द काइंड ऑफ थिंकिंग दैट वॉज देयर दैट दे ही इज नॉट ट्राइंग टू मेक दम लर्न कनाडा ही इज से पॉपुलराइजिंग द लैंग्वेज ऑफ दैट रीजन एंड सेटिंग ऑफ दूनिट सो नॉलेज वॉज नॉट वेरी पेरोक्यूल यानी कि यू नो इट शुड बी इन दिस लैंग्वेज और दैट लैंग्वेज नॉलेज वॉज इज वॉज यूनिवर्सल दैट वॉज द वे वी अप्रोच इट देन राजा मयूर वर्मन वर्मन ऑफ कर्नाटका ही इन्वाइटेड हंड्रेड्स ऑफ स्कॉलर्स फ्रॉम अहित छत्रा विच इज इन उत्तर प्रदेश ही इन्वाइटेड सो मेनी स्कॉलर्स आप आइए अपने फैमिली को लेके आइए और यहीं पर सेटल हो जाइए ताकि यहाँ का भी नॉलेज बढ़े ताकि यहाँ पर भी आप स्टूडेंट्स को लेंगे so actually i am a descendant of one of those uh, families so when i look at my history we migrated from ahichatra to karnataka in the 4th century so that is my family history and they were experts in grammar maths astronomy so my great grandfather all the others before him they were vyakaranas they were sanskrit vyakaran experts so they were invited to teach vyakaran in uh, karnataka so this was also a thing that was common in india that the kings used to invite scholars and say come and settle down i will give you land teach and you know whatever resources you want i will give it to you but please teach and increase the knowledge of the people in in my in my uh, kingdom so the teacher was the most respected person in society can you imagine a time when the teachers like today we feel the teachers are degraded nobody is giving them importance the people who don't uh, get a job they go and become teachers aise kuch bola jata hai लेकिन पहले क्या था कि बेस्ट लोग जाके टीचर्स बनते थे और उनको सबसे ज़्यादा रिस्पेक्ट दिया जाता था और कोई जब जैसे कोई पूजा है कोई रिलीजियस सेरेमनी है तो क्या करते थे टीचर्स को बुलाते थे और दान देते थे ये एक कस्टम था यानी कि इवन इफ दे आर पुअर पीपल दे आल्सो वांटेड टू डोनेट टू टीचर्स एंड टू स्टूडेंट्स सो दैट वॉज द कल्चर सो दे इज इनफैक्ट ब्रिटिश ब्रिटिश टीचर who has talked about this custom in india he says it's very surprising that even the poor person wants to donate to schools this is very strange he has observed that <clears throat> the kings donated lands to gurus which i told you the uh, seekers of knowledge were freed from the burden of earning so that means gurus ko koi headache nahi tha ki kahan se aayega khana you know how will i uh, how, how will i earn a living the society used to give to the uh, to the teachers and the students so that the people who want to study people who want to teach they don't have to worry about their uh, clothes and their food or medicines all these things were taken care of by the society so the spirit of rational inquiry was well developed so physical phenomena were observed carefully ye sun jaise sunrise hai sunset hai अच्छे से ऑब्जर्व करते थे फिर देन दे वुड फाइंड द पैटर्न देन दे वुड मेक द रूल्स सो इट वाज ऑल लॉजिकल वेरी लॉजिकली दे वुड डेड्यूस सो इट वाज अ वेरी रैशनल एजुकेशन सिस्टम डिबेट वाज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दिस इज अनदर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ इंडियन एजुकेशन दैट डिबेट वॉज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट तर्क विद्या एंड यू फाइंड इट मैंशनड इन महाभारत यू फाइंड इट मैंशनड इन सो मेनी टेक्स याज्ञ वल्ञ संहिता छांदोग्य उपनिषद इन सब में आप देखेंगे कि डिबेट्स हो रहे हैं कोई भी चीज़ सेटल करना है तो आप डिबेट करिए एक स्टेज दिया जाएगा और एक मॉडरेटर होंगे वो भी बहुत शी हैज़ टू बी वेरी नॉलेजेबल फॉर एग्जांपल शंकराचार्य वर्सेस मंदना मिश्रा का जो डिबेट हुआ था टू स्कूल्स ऑफ फिलोसफी एंड द लेडी लेडी इज द जज तो ये जो कहते हैं कि वीमेन वर नॉट एजुकेटेड प्लीज टेल दम टू नो फाइंड आउट अबाउट दिस ग्रेट डिबेट बिटवीन शंकराचार्य एंड मंदना मिश्रा वाई वॉज अ लेडी द जज शी डिसाइडेड हु इज द विनर 
सो डिबेट्स होते थे और एक और इंटरेस्टिंग चीज़ है कि यू नो देवर अ यूनिवर्सिटी कॉल नादिया इन बंगाल उसमें देवर चूजिंग द टीचर्स ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ डिबेट्स सो जितने भी कैंडिडेट्स आते थे वहाँ पढ़ाने के लिए टू बिकम प्रोफेसर इन दैट यूनिवर्सिटी तो उनसे डिबेट कराया जाता था और उसमें जो अच्छे से डिबेट कर रहे हैं उनको सेलेक्ट करते थे प्रोफेसर बनने के लिए सो इमेजिन वॉट फॉर द काइंड ऑफ स्टैंडर्ड्स द किंग्स व फॉन्ड ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजिंग इंटेलेक्चुअल टूर्नामेंट्स तो जो राजा थे वहाँ के कहीं पूरे इंडिया में उनको बड़ा अच्छा लगता था कि हम डिबेट्स ऑर्गेनाइज करेंगे और लोग देखेंगे और जो भी विनर है उस डिबेट के उनको वो पूरे सिटी में लेके जाते थे एक रथ में कि सब देखिए ऐसे होना चाहिए ऐसे बोलना चाहिए ऐसे नॉलेज को लेना चाहिए ऐसे यू नो सो दैट्स हाउ दे क्रिएटेड द रोल मॉडल्स फॉर सोसाइटी नेक्स्ट सो वॉट आई वॉन्ट टू टेल यू दैट इंडिया इम्प्रिंट इज ऑन एवरी डिसिप्लिन दैट वी स्टडी टूडे जितने भी आप आई मीन इट्स अ स्वीपिंग स्टेटमेंट आई यू माई थिंक बट एक्चुअली आप जो भी डिसिप्लिन पढ़ाए जा रहे हैं आज यूनिवर्सिटीज़ में अगर आप उनके हिस्ट्री को जाके देखेंगे तो वो कहीं ना कहीं इंडिया के साथ ही रहेगा वो आपको पता चलेगा कि तो इंडिया में ही शुरू हुआ था दैट्स वॉट आई हैव फाउंड ओके सो वी हैड दीज गुरुज कणादा चारक चारका आर्यभट्टा वराह मिहिरा ब्रह्म गुप्ता भास्कर आचार्य पाणिनी पतंजलि पिंगला भारत भरत मुनि माटी शास्त्र हंड्रेड्स ऑफ अदर गुरुज हैव लेड देअर फाउंडेशन the foundation of all the disciplines that we are studying today and i mention them by name because we must remember them science medicine math language art music philosophy water management kitne discipline hai jisme aap jaake dekhenge ki india india mein itna kaam hua hai pehle se hua hai aur usme kitne shastra hai uske bare mein aur uske commentaries hai of course kai sare hai jo humko hum pad nahi sakte kyunki wo humko aata bhi nahi hai wo jo old संस्कृत या अलग अलग कई सारे फट गए हैं खराब हो गए हैं मैनुस्क्रिप्ट सो वी आर नॉट एबल टू सी वॉट इज इन इट बट देर आर थाउजेंड्स ऑफ मैनुस्क्रिप्ट विच हैव नॉट बीन ट्रांसलेटेड इवन टूडे थाउजेंड्स क्या मिलियंस हैं और भारत के बाहर भी हैं इंग्लैंड में हैं और चाइना में हैं बहुत सारे चाइनीज में ट्रांसलेट होकर उन्होंने रख लिया है और हमें ही पता नहीं है उसमें क्या है आज आज के डेट में and just two minutes to tell you about brahmacharya which is missing in today's education system aaj ke education system mein brahmacharya ka concept hi nahi hai because character building ho hi nahi raha hai right so a brahmachari was required to lead a life of discipline and he has to exercise control on every aspect of life whether it is eating drinking sleeping har cheez ko moderate karna hai aur ye education mein hi system mein hi sikhaya jata tha can you imagine how important it is so i mean uh, us of course period of education me there was to be no sex no kind of uh, sexual relationships with opposite uh, gender uske liye bhi scientific reasons the that you know you are not ready for it your mind is not ready for it your body is not ready for it so first develop self control learn everything and then when you enter grihastha then you can enjoy all these things to is tarah se sikhaya jata tha तो अष्टांग योगा ऑल दीज थिंग्स यमा नियमा आसना प्राणायामा प्रत्याहारा ऑल दीज थिंग्स वर टॉट एंड ब्रह्मचार्य प्रिपेयर द स्टूडेंट्स फॉर द लाइफ लाइफ इट सेल्फ सो इट वॉज नॉट दैट आपके माइंड में इतना सारा थूस दिया यू नो ऑल दिस फॉर्मूले यू नो मैथ्स फिजिक्स केमिस्ट्री सब लगा डाल दिया बट दे डोंट नो हाउ टू लिव लाइफ ऐसे नहीं था द मेन थिंग दैट द एजुकेशन सिस्टम गेव वॉज द एबिलिटी टू टू फेस लाइफ एंड देन ऑल द अदर सब्जेक्ट्स केम लेट So I just made this just to show that we have neglected brahmacharya. I am linking all the problems we have: corruption, fraud, you know, domestic violence, alcoholism, depression, sexual violence. All these things I'm link linking to the absence of brahmacharya in the education system. ये depression क्यों होता है? आपको सिखाया ही नहीं गया है कि depression depression ना होने के लिए क्या क्या करना चाहिए? ये education system में है ही नहीं, which, which was a part of Indian system. <coughs> Memory training. memory training was very important i feel like today most of us we don't even remember the phone numbers you know we don't aur humko pata hai ki google mein aur jo data hai facts se hum usko yaad nahi rakhte because teachers also will tell you don't worry you can look it up you know you don't have to worry about it so hum yaad nahi rakhte so actually it is damaged us because our memory has become very very less but in ancient times memory training was very important you would not have got admission into any university agar aapka memory acha nahi hai to aapko admission nahi milega क्योंकि आपको कई सारा इन्फॉर्मेशन आपके दिमाग में होना चाहिए जब आप डिसीजन लेने वाले हैं या आप कुछ भी फील कर रहे हैं अगर आपके आपको सारे वो श्लोक याद हैं ऑल द थिंग्स दैट यू हैव लर्न इफ यू इफ दिस अ वे यू रिमेंबर इट 
you will then remind yourself at the right time and take the right decisions. So memory training was very important, an important component of education. In, uh, you know, Yi Jing, the, the Chinese student Yi Jing, he has written about the extraordinary memory and intellectual capacity of Brahmanas. So Brahmanas ka to unhoni dekha hi hai, but British logo ne ye bhi likha hai, ki in logo ka memory ko dekhe ki ordinary dhobi jo hai, wo kaise yaad rakh sakta hai, kiska kapda hai, kya hai, sab kuch yaad rata hai. So there is a British observer also who has written that Indians seem to have an extraordinary memory. But I don't know where it is today. <laughs> Uh, there were 11 different ways of chanting the Vedas. So I feel that, you know, we should be working with Ved Pachalas uh, and learning from them how they memorize because they have a no, uh, non-linear way of memorizing. It's not just repeating, you know, same thing again and again. They have a, there's a technique to it by which they remember and I think we also should borrow some techniques from them. Stories were used as educational aids. Hmm? So we were the civilization that understood the power of storytelling, right? So, you know, Ramayana, Mahabharata, Purana, all this is stories only, right? Songs, dance, drama, puppet shows, submit stories it have. Uh, and stories of, you know, Panchatantra, Hitopadesha, Jataka tales, all of them were being used to teach something. So, talking animals, animals are telling you something and they're making it very interesting. So, no lecturing. It's not like, ye karna chahi, ye wo karna chahi. They're giving it to you in the form of a story that this is what will happen if you trust somebody without verifying these things will happen to you. So through stories, they were building the wisdom and knowledge. And even mathematics and science, everything, a lot of it was taught in the form of stories or poetry. So if, I, if you know, Bhaskaracharya, for example, he wrote a famous book on math called Leelavati, which is all poetry. So imagine poetry ke form mein sikha ja hai, which is, shows you also how interdisciplinary it was. Aaj hum kehte ki we need cross fertilization of different disciplines. I just have a slide to show, I think you can skip this. Huh? Games were used as educational aids. So games, which is a Saap CD game, hai. Aajkal to sirf numbers hai usme. 1, 2, 3, 4. If you have reached the number, you will get a CD or a Saap. Mil jati hai. But in uh, ancient India, it was not like that. Every square had some guna, you know, some virtue, like, you know, uh, compassion, karuna, or, you know, something, ahankara. So all those uh, squares had some gunas in them. And if you landed on a square which has a positive virtue, okay, like uh, compassion, shraddha, or whatever, then you would go up the ladder. And if you landed on a square with a, uh, with a negative quality, like ahankara, then you would go down the snake. So what do you play with this? The kids understood that this is a good thing and this is a bad thing. Right? So there was no need to tell them anything. They already knew it. But when the British took this game, when they took it to England, they took it all out, the virtues or the good qualities or bad qualities. So they just made it a number game. So that's how it became a numbers game. And then we are playing the downgraded version of this game even today. And this is a very important uh, illustration in my book. I don't think you can see the whole thing. But basically, I've tried to, uh, and it's the longest chapter in my book, that what is the knowledge that India gave to the rest of the world? So, you know, uh, starting with Greece and, uh, you know, we gave them the concepts of medicine. Especially, the most knowledge we have is medicine. Because Ayurvedic concepts, jo hai, doshas, you know, they, they were calling it tumors. Three kinds of uh, dosha, three tumors. Same thing. They have taken all that knowledge. Then, you know, all the listing of the medicines, which our Ayurvedic texts had so many names of herbs, the plants, what will happen from this, what will happen from this, what will happen from side effects, everything is all. The same things you will find them in, in the Western books, which went through Greece. Okay? Um, then it went to Persia, West Asia, you know, Panchatantra, Astronomy, Arithmetic, Algebra, Geometry, Trigonometry, Concept of Infinity, uh, decimal system, this is India. Se gaya hai. And uh, Japan, China, Southeast Asia, I mean, it's mind boggling that, uh, in fact, Japan, can you believe it, that the knowledge of Sanskrit, when it went to Japan, it united Japan. Japan had many, many different uh, rulers and they were not united. But through Sanskrit, one of the rulers called Shomu, uh, he united the whole of Japan. So there were so many different uh, temples where the Sanskrit shlokas had to be chanted every day. He made the rule that morning and evening these have to be chanted because these are powerful mantras which are good for the kingdom 
And so when everybody started chanting in all, all over Japan, they got united. Okay. Um, uh, China, so much went to China, ophthalmology. China was, uh, uh, you know, there were a lot of monasteries. So when Buddhism went to China, it is not just Buddhism, that Buddhist religion chala gaya. Jitne bhi Buddhist monks jo the, jo jate the Nalanda se, they all had knowledge of Ayurveda also. So they knew about uh, uh, surgery and various Ayurvedic uh, techniques. So wo knowledge, or maths, to Buddhism, they give a name Buddhism, but actually maths, physics, uh, medicine, administration, all that went along with these uh, preachers. Because they, were, they all studied from the best universities. So you, I was very surprised to know that there was one monastery in Zhejiang in China where uh, some Buddhist monk had given a book on gynecology, which was written in India. In India, may, there was a text on gynecology written by a woman, woman Vaidya. So he just gave it to that monastery as a, you know, just as a gift. Then he translated it and translated it. Then he wrote what he wrote, 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 what he wrote. Then that monastery became a center of gynecology treatment, gynecological disorders treatment. So there were many ladies who went there. So this way you can see that how our knowledge has benefited so many countries, like China for example. Southeast Asia, so I think if you should, if I can't give all the details today, but if you read the book, you will get all the details. Next book. And now I have told you all about the greatness, how great we were. But today, when you look at you, to look at it, you might think, "Kahan gaya wo sab knowledge? Why do we not use it anymore? Or why is it in such a degraded form?" So this is what happened when our uh, universities were destroyed in the 11th century, 11th, 12th, 13th century, when we had invaders coming in. This is a picture of Bhaktiar Khilji when he is, uh, Nalanda, Nalanda University has been destroyed and the bodies are lying over there. These are all the scholars lying on the floor. Everybody is dead. Sorry, uh, go back. And um, somebody has brought, and they, the library was set on fire. It burned for months and months. There were so books there. इतने मुश्किल से उन्होंने कलेक्ट किया था वो सब बुक्स वो सब जला दिया एंड देन एक बचा हुआ एक मैनुस्क्रिप्ट लाके दे रहा है एक बंदा उसको बक्तियार किजी को तो बोल रहा है इसमें क्या है एंड देन दे कैन नॉट मेक आउट इसमें क्या है एंड दिस इज़ रिटन बाय मिनहाज द सिराज हु इज़ द हिस्टोरियन ऑफ दैट so, so basically a whole lot of universities were destroyed, uh, one after the other. Uh, Northern India was the most devastated, but Dira Dira South may be hua. And uh, Brahmins, the scholars, in those days of course Brahmins were preserving the Vedic knowledge, whereas the other knowledge, the skills and others were preserved by the other uh, jatis, different skills. So they all fled when, uh, when these universities were destroyed, they fled to different parts. For example, from Vik Vikram Shila, many scholars fled to Tibet. And then South India went to South India. Where they went, there was a little bit of a preserve of knowledge. That's how today we still know so much. We still have something. It's not like our knowledge is totally gone. So it has been preserved. But a lot of it is in the language that we cannot read or we cannot connect with. But many of them have been preserved thanks to the scholars who carried those manuscripts away when they ran away from the universities. After the destruction of universities came another phase which was the colonial period. The British imperialism, I think actually more knowledge got lost in this period than in the previous period because what happened is that the higher centers of learning were destroyed but the lower centers, the schools were still intact. But that was attacked during the British imperialism. So what was the British agenda for Indian education? They knew that domination over India cannot last uh, unless they control the people of India and that domination uh, can, can happen only if the education system is changed. So they actually did a survey, a pura survey kiya unho ne, jis mein wo dekhna chaate te ki kya kya level hai education ka India mein. Aur unho ne paaya ke almost every village had a school. So you can see the survey, it is still there. The Dharampal, there is a famous person called Dharampal who has written a book called The Beautiful Tree. In that he has talked about the British survey. He also came to know by chance Dharampal ji was in London, he was working in some work, so he was looking at the libraries and what books are there. Then he got to know this survey that the British had done in the 18th century. So he wrote the whole survey in the whole survey that where different parts of India, you know, Punjab, Madras, Bengal, what is the level of education? 
उसमें टेबल्स बने हुए हैं एंड दैट इज एब्सोल्यूटली शॉकिंग उसमें लिखा गया है कि लिटरेसी इज वेरी हाई ऑलमोस्ट होल ऑफ इंडिया वॉज लिटरेट अपने अपने भाषा में लिटरेट थे वो बंगाल में जाएंगे तो बंगाली में लिटरेट हैं महाराष्ट्र में मराठी में यू नो पंजाब में पंजाबी में सो दे ऑल वर लिटरेट और स्कूल में सब कुछ सिखाया जाता था मैथमेटिक्स रामायण एवरी थिंग वॉज बींग टॉट एंड एजुकेशन वॉज वेरी गुड उन्होंने देखा है उन्होंने नोटिस किया और उन्होंने उस सर्वे में लिखा भी है एंड उसके बाद उन्होंने प्लान बनाया कि कैसे हम इन लोगों को हमारे लॉयल सब्जेक्ट्स बनाए कैसे हम इन लोगों को अपने मेक मेक देम आवर सर्वेंट्स सो इफ दे कंटिन्यू स्टडिंग इन देयर ओन लैंग्वेजेस देन दे आर नॉट गोइंग टू फील फेथफुल टूवर्ड्स अस सो इट वाज अ वेरी प्लान्ड पॉलिसी दैट द ब्रिटिश इम्पोज सो देर वॉज अ देर वॉज ऑफकोर्स अ कन्वीनियंस अगर सब लोग इंग्लिश में बोलेंगे तो उनके लिए कन्वीनियंट था उनको फिर दे डोंट नीड टू लर्न एनी लैंग्वेज वो कंट्रोल करना चाहते हैं हमको Why do they want everybody to speak in their languages? So they said, "Sabko, let's make it English medium, and uh, we will fund only the English medium schools." So uh, there was a 15-year debate in England. England, England के Parliament में 15 साल तक debate चला कि अगर हम इनके education system को कैसे change करें, so that they can become our loyal subjects. And then finally, the Macaulay Minute came, and the Indian, uh, in Indian Education Act of 1835 was passed. Then they decided that we have made all the funds. Now, they have made some Sanskrit college. Some funds have been made. So they have closed all of them. And all the funding went to English medium uh, education. Pe chala gaya. So their aim, the British aim, I am sure you all know the Macaulay's Minute. How many of you know the Macaulay's Minute? Okay. so macaulay was a person he may wrote down minute means memorandum so he wrote a memorandum ke uh, indian education system mein ka, uh, what is the aim of our education so the aim was to create a class of persons indian in blood and color but english in taste in opinions in morals and in intellect so this is what they wanted they wanted that you look like indian that's fine but you your thinking must be english your taste must be english so you must love shakespeare you must love mozart to is tarah ke unhone pura plan bana ke that is how they funded the schools fir dheere dheere aise kya hua jo hamare jo local schools the hamare jo vernacular schools the wo sare khatam hone lage kyunki inhone taxation bhi itna kar diya british logon ne ke kuch jagah mein to they made the tax as high as 40% 50% 50% such high taxation so uh, the, the people became very poor now there was no more and money to donate to the educational institutions pehle jo log you know they they were com competing to donate to the scholars ab to wo sab khatam ho gaya now it was a question of survival so i mentioned dharampal this is the name that you should remember it is thanks to him that we know about the english uh, the british survey of education that was carried out he is no more he died a very bitter person so which i have already told you right he did surveys uh, every village had a patshala so dedicated teachers so basically in that british survey uh, they also found out that the teachers are very dedicated there is a mention of that ki they they are not getting uh, they don't uh, have enough salary they don't have enough money but still they are turning up to teach every day the british noticed in that and they wrote in that survey basically wo survey kya hai na alag alag jo district collectors the unhone collect kiya aur data aur inko bhej diya तो उसमें से कई सारे लेटर्स हैं उनके सो दैट्स हाउ वी नो ऑल दिस एंड इन तमिल स्पीकिंग एरियाज ओके इन द सेम सर्वे यू विल फाइंड दैट इन द तमिल स्पीकिंग एरियाज द शूद्रास वर फ्रॉम सेवेंटी दे रेंज फ्रॉम सेवेंटी परसेंट इन सेलम एंड तिन्ने वैली टू ओवर एट्टी फोर परसेंट जो हमको जो बताया जाता है कि जो लोअर कास्ट के लोग थे वो स्कूल नहीं जाते थे बट दिस सर्वे विच वॉज कैरीड आउट इन द एटीन सेंचुरी शोड दैट इन मेनी स्कूल द शूद्रास फॉर मोर दैन द brahmins and there were many innovative methods of teaching which have come out in all the uh, the books that came out during that time the british period so reverend t robertson jo hai unhone ek uh, likha hai ki unhone bengal mein bardwan mein kya dekha so it's very interesting what he found is that they have a very interesting way of ex uh, examinations so he said that hamare britain mein to log bacche jo hai examination se ghabrate hain lekin yahan pe to bacche bade enjoy karte hain examination क्यों वो इसलिए कि उनका सिस्टम ये था कि महीने में एक बार सारे बच्चे एक जगह में मिलते थे ओके सारे स्कूल के बच्चे अलग अलग स्कूल के पाठशाला के बच्चे फिर उसके बाद क्या होता था कि जो टॉप टॉपर है 
टॉपर है एक पाठशाला का वो दू, दूसरे टॉपर से एक क्वेश्चन पूछता था फ्रॉम अनदर स्कूल और अगर वो आंसर कर लेगा तो ठीक है अगर नहीं कर सकता तो सेकंड वाले को जाएगा और वो नहीं कर सकता तो थर्ड वाले को जाएगा तो इस तरह से एक स्कूल के जो स्टूडेंट्स हैं वो दूसरे स्कूल के स्टूडेंट्स को क्वेश्चन पूछते हैं और यही उनका एग्जामिनेशन था तो ही वॉज सेंग दैट ये लुक एट दिस दे आर ऑल ट्रीटिंग इट लाइक अ पिकनिक द एग्जामिनेशन इज अ पिकनिक and he also said that the brahmans and the shudras and all of them are sitting together in this uh, in this competition in the so he said that's very surprising and he said uh, shudras are scoring more marks than the brahmans in some case and he is sitting with a swollen face the brahman but they are sitting together so he was saying this is very interesting reverend andrew bell he is another educator he was a missionary actually christian missionary he came to uh, went to tamil nadu and uh, he was going to different schools and then he was very surprised that attendance was very high and they are all very good in um, basic arithmetic uh, so he was wanting to see kaise ho raha hai to unhone dekha ki har school ke bahar uh, sand hota hai na sand sand ka ek ye bana hua tha heap jaise aur bacche jo hain do din blackboard nahi hai kuch nahi class ke andar lekin uske upar wo log alphabet sikh rahe the तो और उन्होंने देखा कि जब टीचर भी नहीं है तब भी जो बड़े बच्चे हैं वो छोटे बच्चे को सिखा रहे हैं सारे अक्षर कैसे लिखना है या फिर मैथ्स भी सिखा रहे हैं तो उसमें करते हैं और फिर मिटा देते हैं उसी में तो दे डोंट नीड अ ब्लैक बोर्ड दे डोंट नीड पेपर तो देन ही वेंट एंड रोट अ रिपोर्ट एंड्रू बेल दैट यू नो दिस इज द मद्रास मेथड ही केव इन द नेम मद्रास मेथड दैट हमको भी शुरू करना चाहिए क्योंकि हमारे इंग्लैंड में uh, हम लोग स्कूल बना नहीं पा रहे क्योंकि हमारे पास फंडिंग नहीं है ब्लैक बोर्ड के लिए और यू नो वी डोंट हैव ऑल दिस पेपर नहीं है इसलिए हम सोच रहे हैं कि हम स्कूल नहीं खोल पा रहे हैं और ये लोग देखिए कैसे इतने कम रिसोर्स में ये लोग सारे हाईली लिटरेट हैं तो ही ओपन द मद्रास स्कूल कैन यू बिलीव इट तो वापस जाके ही कॉल्ड इट द मद्रास मेथड एंड बाय 1821 300,000 थ्री हंड्रेड थाउजेंड चिल्ड्रेन वर बींग एजुकेटेड अंडर डॉक्टर बेल्स प्रिंसिपल्स एंड इट वॉज इवन अडॉप्टेड इन यूरोप वेस्ट इंडीज बगोटा इन कोलम्बिया सब जगह वो मद्रास मेथड लेके गए सो so, ये जो है मद्रास कॉलेज है आज भी है इफ यू गो टू स्कॉटलैंड जो एंड्रू बेल ने शुरू किया था जिसमें कि इंडियन मेथड ऑफ टीचिंग था तो मद्रास कॉलेज आज भी है तो ये सब हुआ आ, तो धीरे धीरे क्या हुआ एज द ब्रिटिश रूल एडवांस्ड इंडिया बिकेम पुअर एंड पुअर यू ऑल नो द ट्रिलियंस ऑफ डॉलर्स दैट वर शिफ्ट दैट वर टेकन अवे फ्रॉम इंडिया राइट इवन इन इंडिया फॉर द वॉर्स फॉर दैम द वर्ल्ड वॉर्स फॉर फॉर बाई इंडियन soldiers so basically we were completely jo hum richest one of the richest countries in the world highly educated highly literate the and we were down to this level poverty famine this is a picture of uh, uh, famine where they are giving some you know little bit of rice to everybody but of course the main um, rice was being sent to the soldiers to fight the war so everything that india produced food grains textiles steel gold jo bhi production tha पहले जो इंडिया के लिए यूज होता था अब वो पूरा ब्रिटेन के लिए था तो सब कुछ जो है तो मार्केट उनका था एंड दे वुड सेट द प्राइस दे वुड चार्ज द टैक्सेस तो स्लोली स्लोली हमारे इंडस्ट्री सारे खत्म होने लग गए नो दे वॉज नो फूड फॉर टीचर्स जो पहले टीचर्स के लिए खाना होता था जो लोग भेजते थे अब उनके पास पैसे नहीं इतना टैक्स दे रहे थे कि अब वो खाना वाना कुछ नहीं दे सकते थे टीचर्स को और जो डिस्ट्रिक्ट कलेक्टर है उसका नाम ही देखिए डिस्ट्रिक्ट कलेक्टर वो भी आज भी चला आ रहा है वही नाम उसका काम ही था कलेक्ट करो कलेक्ट करो इट वाज नॉट अबाउट एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन जस्ट कलेक्ट द टैक्सेस सो हिज रोल वाज टू फ्लीस सिटीजन्स और टेंपल्स उन्होंने टेंपल्स तक को नहीं छोड़ा जो लोग डालते थे पहले उसके अंदर जो दान करते थे वो सब तो ब्रिटिश uh, गवर्नमेंट को ही जाता था और आज भी वही चल रहा है एक्चुअली आज भी वही पॉलिसी कंटिन्यू हो रहा है दैन पीपल लाइक जय साई दीपक एंड रमेश जी दे आर फाइटिंग दैट दे आर ट्राइंग टू make sure that the temple money remains with the temples and is used for the community the mother tongue was relegated to the second language so in fact gandhi ji said in 1931 that uh, the british had left india more illiterate than it was 100 years before the british were shocked when uh, when gandhi ji said that uh, the british have made us more illiterate than we were so what do you mean there was a big debate बट दिस इज वॉट गांधी जी वॉज ट्राइंग टू से दैट हम लोग आपके आने से पहले हम सब लोग लिटरेट थे हम सबको पढ़ना लिखना आता था हम मैथ्स कर सकते थे और हमारा लैंग्वेज अच्छा था वी को टॉक अबाउट रामायण महाभारत वो सब चला गया जब आप आए बाय द एंड ऑफ नाइनटीन सेंचुरी मोस्ट ऑफ इंडिया इंडिजिनस इंडस्ट्रीज है जो पहले जो आर्टिस होते थे जो शिल्पी होते थे 
वो सब अभी गरीब हो गए उन सबको फार्मिंग करना पड़ गया बिकॉज उन वो जो भी बनाते थे अब वो सब एक्सपोर्ट नहीं कर पा रहे थे पैसे अपने पास रख नहीं पा रहे थे तो वो गरीबी जो है उसकी वजह से दे वर दे वर फोर्स टू बिकम फार्मर्स तो दैट्स वाई यू नो वेन वी गॉट इंडिपेंडेंस दे वर सो मेनी पीपल इन फार्मिंग राइट तो उनको विच वॉज नॉट नीडेड यू डोंट नीड सो मेनी पीपल टू डू फार्मिंग तो जो बैलेंस होता था बिटवीन इंडस्ट्री एंड एग्रीकल्चर जो बैलेंस था ना वो चला गया फिर जो लैंडलेस एग्रीकल्चरल लेबर्स उनका पॉपुलेशन बढ़ गया और पर कैपिटल डिपेंडेंस ऑन एग्रीकल्चर ज्यादा हो गया सो so, ऐसे सिचुएशन में एजुकेशन कहाँ हो सकता था सो एजुकेशन वॉज नॉट अ प्रायोरिटी सो द सैड थिंग यू नो देर वर ब्रिटिश सिविल सर्वेंट्स कॉल्ड लाइक कैम्बल कैम्बल इज वन पर्सन ही वॉज सिंपैथेटिक टू इंडिया and he said that the degeneration of education was attributable to the transfer of capital to the country from the native government to the europeans actually jab wo survey kiya tha na british ne to there were district collectors like campbell some of them good ones who actually said that our policy is not helping it's not uh, it is destroying their education unhone likha tha and uh, there is uh, ye dekhiye ludlow there's a person called ludlow and he said that in every hindu village which has retained its old form i am assured that the children generally are able to read write and cipher but that means maths but where we have swept away the village system as in bengal there the village school has also disappeared to un logon ne bhi ye note kiya tha unme se bhi kuch logon ne so now comes that i have told you all about our educational heritage so what should we do now that question comes every time so i just made three points i think we should become grateful inheritors of our own educational heritage so our curriculum must include a brief history of every discipline as a way of inculcating healthy civilizational pride to hamare books mein ek to patriotism hai that's very good but we should also have a civilizational pride you know we should know about all what the gurus have taught uh, we should know that we have to honor our pitrus and our gurus jo hamara tradition tha that needs to be brought back and i think we should include the relevant and useful elements from our ancient indian educational system mai ye nahi keh rahi hu ki pura ka pura jo pehle gurukul hua karta tha wo fir se sara leke aaye lekin usme se jo bhi acche cheeze jo acche systems the jo educate sikhane ke tarike the wo sab hum la sakte hain and subjects like nyaya shastra ganita jyotisha vyakarana let us bring them back because they are extremely useful in opening up your mind and making you think differently okay um so i think we should work with vedic schools which i already mentioned to learn memorization techniques and decoloniality so i think that we need to get back our own lenses to view the world what has happened to us now is that we are so colonized that humko pata hi nahi hai ki apne nazariye se kaise dekhna hai duniya ko we don't know because we have been so colonized to humko dheere 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 wo nikal ke apne original form mein wapas jana hai so what i want to say is uh, the question that uh, that also comes up is why should we be rooted in our indian knowledge system jo bharatiya gyana parampara jisko kehte hain usme kyun hame root hona chahiye why should we be rooted i think we need it because it helps to give us a big picture perspective hum koi cheez our uh, system makes us take a big picture for everything we don't see just a narrow view we always take the big view okay so we uh, we can see beyond our body beyond our state our country boundaries and we can reflect on all the connected systems and see what is good for humanity i think that is one of the reasons we should connect to our indian knowledge systems and you know if we if the whole world was rooted in indian uh, knowledge system then um, would we be facing this huge disaster of climate change that we are facing today when i look at all the problems that we are facing climate change ho chahe high carbon footprint ho pollution accumulation of garbage pesticide in the rivers in the food ye sab this is all come from the modern education system which has not made you realize these things beforehand uh, you know there is a famous quote by einstein einstein said that you cannot solve problems using the same thinking that was used to create the problem ab kya ho raha hai hum jis uh, thinking se problems bane hain usi thinking se hum ab aage badh rahe hain we need to break it we need to get back to our indian education system the indian knowledge system and the lenses to view the world so that we become problem solvers that is my uh, offering and here is a quote um, which is of course i don't think is very necessary let's go to the next one so i think i'll come to an end uh, the end of my talk and uh, if you uh, please uh, if you buy this book i think it will help you to 
form your arguments because now is the world of social media where you are having pitted battles against you know different viewpoints it's good to be armed with facts because i've given you the sources i've given you the references so i would i hope that the young people will use this book to present your arguments to develop pride in your heritage okay and also there's another thing when you know your uh, know your the knowledge that was created it will also help you to stop the patenting that is happening now in the western world lot of knowledge our knowledge is being patented and we don't even know about it because we don't know it's our knowledge so that is the reason if you read our shastras if you learn sanskrit uh, try to understand what was in our shastras you will also be able to preserve that knowledge and not let it go away and get patented the simple example i'll give you is that um, uh, you know this uh, this uthak baithak karke ek punishment diya jata tha hamare yahan ki you know you hold the ears and you do go up and down punishment diya jata tha this is actually a yogic uh, this is yoga asana okay um, so what has happened they have discovered that this one actually helps hyperactive children to hyperactive children ko aapko yaad hai punishment diya jata tha logo jo bacche jo zyada baat kar rahe hain unko class ke bahar ye karna padta tha so they have done a research and found out that it helps the child to become less hyperactive and more focus more तो उठक बैठक को अभी सुपर ब्रेन योगा करके उन्होंने पेटेंट कर लिया है और हम लोग सोते रहे हमको पता भी नहीं था हम तो सोच रहे ये तो क्या है ये तो बस यू नो इट्स नॉट इवन नॉलेज ऑल दिस इज नॉलेज एंड इन फैक्ट इफ वी गो बैक टू आवर नॉलेज सिस्टम एंड ट्राई टू इक्विप आवर सेल्स वी माइट बी द वन विनिंग द नोबेल प्राइजेस वी माइट बी वन विनिंग द बिग अवार्ड्स एंड अनदर एग्जाम्पल इज मंजुल भार्गवा हु वन द मंजुल भार्गवा जो मैथमेटिशियन है उनको हाईएस्ट अवार्ड मिला मैथमेटिक्स का फील्ड्स मेडल इट्स लाइक अ नोबेल प्राइज ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स और क्यों मिला बिकॉज वो छुट्टियों में गर्म गर्मी की छुट्टियों में अमेरिका से इंडिया आते थे जयपुर जाते थे और अपने ग्रैंडफादर uh, के साथ बैठ के वो सब संस्कृत सीखते थे एंड ही स्टार्टेड रीडिंग पिंगला डिफरेंट मैथमेटिशियंस यू नो ब्रह्म इन सब का उन्होंने किताब uh, उनका सब पढ़ा उन्होंने क्या क्या लिखा है इन शास्त्रों में और फिर वेन ही डिड इज रिसर्च then he said uh, thought of why not i use solve the gauss theorem using brahma gupta pingala hemachandra why don't i use the mathematical works written by them and try to solve it and uske liye unko highest award mila fields medal so this is just one example that i want to tell you that you know if you go back into your history and your knowledge you might actually discover something which will uh, which will which will be considered revolutionary by today's world so with this i come to an end thank you very much So let us begin with the Q and A session, and I can't the, miss the chance to ask the first one. Is sab ke piche kya inspiration tha apka? From where did all this begin? I think inspiration ye tha ki as I told you about the school books, right? When I went and I saw my daughter's history textbook, yes. and the other thing is that because I come from a, a family where everybody was highly educated, knowledgeable, so I always used to keep hearing about what is in our shastras. so i knew that there is lot of knowledge in it and uh, when i saw the misrepresentation uh, i think that was the starting point and i always i am i'm a proud indian i know that we have given so much to the world but um, i i realized that people don't seem to know about it it's not being acknowledged so more than inspiration i think i first started as you know giving back an answer i want to learn more so that i can answer these people aur karte karte fir wo inspiration bhi ban gaya so i keep coming back to india and uh, you know from small things now i started discovering things in adhyatma yes. i'm learning about how you know how the mind can be controlled there is so much knowledge right. all of it is giving more happiness mm -hmm. so that's how it is going on okay thank you any questions from the audience i think he asked about environment right so environment i want to tell you that uh, we had a great understanding of how to preserve the environment first of all everything was sacred for us so rivers are sacred trees are sacred so in that uh, with that kind of thinking Uh, there was no design that was made which was harmful to the environment so no subject called environmental sciences or environmental engineering was taught but still everybody knew that agar hame bridge banana hai hame building banana hai to humko dhyan rakhna hoga ki koi you know ped paudhe ko paudhon ko nuksan na ho koi animals ka nuksan na ho so that was the way they thought in fact bridge wagaira construct karne se pehle ek murti banate the uski puja karte the imagine that is the world view that we had rivers ko there was no question of putting any pollutant in the river okay you cannot urinate in the river you cannot send any waste product into the river ye to hamare shastro mein likha gaya hai charaka samhita mein we had the understanding that agar aap rivers ko pollute karenge to aapka hi health kharab ho jayega 
और ये चीज यूरोप में दे केम टू नो ओनली इन आई थिंक फिफ्टीन सिक्सटीन सेंचुरी और इवन लेटर विच वी ऑलरेडी न्यू इन लाइक थ्री थाउजेंड बी सी या उससे भी पहले जो हमें पता था कि पोल्यूटेड वाटर को पीना नहीं चाहिए ये बात भी दे केम टू नो वेरी लेट ओके यू विल बी वेरी सरप्राइज टू नो इट इज देर इज टाइम आई वॉन्ट टू टेल यू वेरी फनी स्टोरी दैट ये जो कॉलेरा है ना कॉलेरे कॉलेरा का जो आउटब्रेक होता था दे डिन नो दैट वो पानी की वजह से हो रहा है सो इंग्लैंड में जब फ्लश टॉयलेट इंट्रोड्यूस हुआ फ्लश टॉयलेट के उसमें क्या है फर्स्ट टाइम जब इंट्रोड्यूस हुआ तो वो वेरी एक्साइटेड कि हम ना फ्लश कर देंगे तो हम जो भी कर रहे हैं हमारा वेस्ट प्रोडक्ट पानी के साथ चला जाएगा और वो नदी में चला जाएगा और हमारे नज़र से दूर चला जाएगा स्मेल भी चला जाएगा वी डोंट हैव टू वरी फिर उसके बाद कॉलेरा होने लग गया सबको एंड दे डिन अंडरस्टैंड कि उसकी वजह से हो रहा है वो कई साल लगे उनको जब पता चला कि ये जो हम फ्लश कर रहे हैं टॉयलेट से वो पानी में जा रहा है और वही पानी हम पी रहे हैं उसके वजह से हमें हो रहा है एंड देन दे द ट्रीटमेंट प्रोसेस वर इंट्रोड्यूस्ड फिर हमारे यहाँ ऐसे कुछ सिस्टम था ही नहीं जो हमारे एक्चुअली नो वट दिस ओपन डेफिकेशन जो हमारा जो कस्टम था उन दिनों में वो एक्चुअली एनवायरमेंटली सस्टेनेबल था बिकॉज हम लोग जाते थे फील्ड्स में जाके करते थे अपना काम वी वुड डेफिकेट और फिर हम उसको सॉइल से कवर कर देते थे वो रिसाइकल भी हो जाता था न्यूट्रियट्स और वी इट वुड नॉट गो इन टू द वाटर बॉडीज लेकिन बाद में जब वो आया द टॉयलेट्स तो दैट इज द सिस्टम वॉज दैट क्लीन वाटर इज यूज टू रिमूव द वेस्ट एंड इट इज यूज टू पोल्यूट इवन मोर क्लीन वाटर दैट बिकेम द सिस्टम सो देर आर लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स दैट वी कैन लर्न फ्रॉम आर एंशियंट नॉलेज टू प्रिजर्व द एनवायरमेंट योर नेम सर absolutely jainism buddhism hinduism all these religions which came from india they all have they are rooted in nature so that's the way they, they, their thinking is different yeah. sorry chalo na chalo okay yeah my name is alhad sadachar so you spoke about two things uh, reinstating faith in our educational heritage for uh, today generation and reintroducing at least uh, important things out of i mean we cannot introduce everything now we are i mean it's already high time new educational policy is now also under implementation process so how fast this can be done how everybody can you know contribute in this uh, you know take it to government and because uh, this needs to be now done on priority because we understand that uh, everybody you know something is coming from Amer america or some western world it it has got immediate acceptance whereas as you narrated everything has gone outside from this country of origin so your thoughts thoughts on this how we can do it fast how everybody can contribute how this can be taken up on priority i think the the government is aware of this so if you read the nep new education policy they have mentioned all these things that we need to bring it back the question is how so uh, so first of all we need a lot of teachers who are aware we have to first of all know what is in the indian knowledge systems so there is now an indian knowledge system department also which is working actively and they are trying to bring in uh, different aspects of indian knowledge into the curriculum so this will take some time because we need teachers we need uh, people who write textbooks and then slowly it comes back and uh, how we can contribute is to show interest in it i mean parents also uh, you know show interest in it and ask for it uh, and also increase your own knowledge so, you know to increase your knowledge about the subject and then uh, push the government to implement it faster or you know if there is a school that is doing it then you know uh, try to popularize that those kind of things it, it won't happen overnight but i am seeing the changes i am seeing that i i just went to a couple of universities and as i am seeing how the indian knowledge systems are being integrated in fact there was a wonderful national youth conference which was held in kerala in which all the children were asked to contribute uh, some poster or some paper on anything related to uh, the indian shastras you know uh, our shastras and uh, make it relevant for today so i was surprised to see that so many children had taken the trouble to you know somebody talked spoke about artha shastra uh, that per child had tried to understand what is in artha shastra and how it can be used in today's parliamentary uh, proceedings or debates and all that another child had 
explored the Pakashastra, you know, the science of cooking, and uh, was trying to explain how our cooking, how we should use something from there, uh, you know, what kind of knowledge can we, can we take. So already those kind of competitions have started. So I feel that slowly, slowly you will find when the books come out, you know, when the teachers come out, trained teachers come who can teach, that when they are teaching mathematics, they are also teaching something from Bhaskaracharya, Brahmagupta, uh, and you know, giving you the history of it, giving you the Indian way of doing calculus, and then telling you the modern way, you know, which, is, which one is easier or harder. Those discussions will then come when the teachers are trained. And I think right here, we have a teacher here, he was telling me something about uh, different teaching uh, methods using Indian uh, knowledge. So if you want to answer this question, that also is a... Would you like to say something about what you're doing? Okay, no, but you are also, the, you, you can actually answer him about what you are doing, which, you, which is very interesting. How much time do we have? Actually, there was a time when Ayurveda and Western medicine both were being taught in Indian colleges. At some point, then the British stopped it completely. They stopped the Ayurveda and just let the Western, the Western medicine be taught. Uh, so, uh, what is happening is that in Ayurveda, which we probably still don't have that many research papers, you know, to give all the, you know, the double blind studies or the huge studies need to be done. Uh, you know, the, because the system has now become like that. That a medicine, when it comes to the market, any kind of clinical trials, hote hai, wo studies, hote hai, uske baad wo introduce hota hai, cancer treatment, ye treatment ke liye. So, Ayurveda ka kya ho raha hai, ke there is also a lot of bad publicity. And also, we also have problems within Ayurveda. I mean, not all of them are making medicines, high quality medicines, right? Some of them, them themselves are not uh, uh, probably certified. So, wo sara ho raha hai. I think the Ayush ministry is working. And at least in India, there is some kind of collaboration between Ayurveda and allopathy. So we can actually have a mix of both of them, both of hair. But uh, what we need, I feel, is more research and more writings, you know, which are, because Western world today has got into this, whatever comes in the journals, you know, in the Western journals, wo, wo, usko, they will take it as the gold standard. Documentation. Documentation hona chahiye. patients pe ye try kiya hai, kya kya asar hua, wo pura documentation hoga. Tab ja ke then Ayurved, Ayurvedic people have to do a lot of work. So hopefully that Ayush, Ayush ministry will do something. Can I? Can I? Can I? Because I have been... See, part of my, what I wanted to ask is covered by him and the remaining part is addressed by you. Basically, what I wanted to know is this uh, heritage of uh, education's, uh, educational system in India, has it been taken care of in the new education policy completely? That's what... And partly, I think you have answered it. So, what, what could be done to... Uh, include that. See, the theory and policy is all done, but we have to implement it. So, at the grassroots level, it will be done when we do it, it will be done when we do it, the mistakes will come out of it. So, one of the textbooks can be changed to include the history of every subject. So, the math is the history. I mean, please, in geography, we don't want to hear that Magellan is the first person who discovered that the earth is round. This is there in one geography book, I found it. When Magellan went around the earth, then he discovered that the earth is round. World people came to know the world is round, and I was just shocked. What is our panchanga? What is our, we all know that the earth is round. We didn't even need anyone to go around the world. We were able to deduce that the earth is round. So you know the the textbooks have to be changed to include the Indian thinking in it. Uh, How much time will take? I. <laughs> Now you see, for example, I have written this book. Now if I have to make it a textbook, then I have to write it differently. So it's about now writing the right kind of textbooks and the teachers. I don't know. I mean, it may take five to ten years, I would say. But if you just keep speed it up and you, know, you make it like a top priority mission, then it will be faster. So it's difficult to tell how long it will take. But I think this government is serious uh, about doing it. And, uh, you know, maybe one or two school schools will come first, which are already teaching. Maybe they'll produce their books, then, you know, slowly the others will follow. By the way, I am also exploring Gurukulas. I'm also going to, uh, after I wrote this book, I got a lot of 
parents writing to me and saying that I am totally convinced that ancient Indian education was very good. I want to send my child to a Gurukula. Can you please recommend a Gurukula? I don't know. So then I said, please wait for some years. I will travel around India and see what the Gurukulas are teaching. So I'm discovering some amazing Gurukulas. Sorry? I'm sure. I'm sure. But today's parents will ask that after studying in the Guru Kul, they will get a job in the Guru Kul, what will they do? All these concerns are there, right? So they don't want that they will become a preacher or they will just be somebody. So they are thinking about long-term things. But as I'm going to Guru Kulas, I am finding that some of the Guru Kulas have found the solution. You know, how to train the children in such a way that they learn skills, they learn logic, and then they can compete with the others who are going in the mainstream education. So I'm, I think it's a matter of a few years and we'll see the educational landscape changing considerably because more of us are getting aware. Yeah. I'm Brigadier Sunil Gaupande, my name is that. Heritage is very important aspect and heritage got, has got a lot of higher truths hidden in that. We all know. There is a one uh, philosophy which is going on for a long time, even I'm also privy to that. It's very difficult to convince everybody. Where science ends, Adhyatma begins. It is being taught in various texts as well as in various talk shows and uh, even in the Bhagavatam and all that thing. So is there anything, unless, what I feel, unless it is tangible, it is not convincible to anyone. The gentleman who also said that Ayurveda is not uh, that much, uh, find, it doesn't find any relevance uh, compared to the allopathy and all. Similarly, the where the science says gradually the science is inching forward, inching forward, inching forward and that truth keeps coming to us. So is there anything like that in your book or anything would you like to throw light on that thing? How that Adhyatma will impinge or affect our heritage? How it is if... Uh, uh, all, I don't agree with you that uh, Ayurveda is being... Uh, they are not seeing any benefit in it, right? You, you said something like that. No, the uh, gentleman said Ayurveda is not uh, finding any relevance uh, or something no, actually like that. actually I will tell you. It is very important. This, this uh, hadi, allopathy is more uh, this uh, being taken. Co turmeric got patented, right? Uh, or no, we, we stopped them from patenting, I think. The neem got patented, but uh, turmeric we were able to stop, Indian government. But uh, people in the West have realized the value of turmeric. And uh, the, you get that uh, turmeric uh, coffee also. Uh, turmeric latte, yeah, turmeric latte in Starbucks. So, uh, all the, so Ayurvedic knowledge is being appreciated. It's just that it's not like that's the first place you will go to when you have when you have got cancer or something like that. That uh, that is that is the thing. Uh, so, your question was Adhyatma yeah, and. I said uh, where the science says the Adhyatma begins. So, is there anything relevance of that nature in your education? In my book, I'm not gone uh, on deeply into that because mine gives an overview of it. But there are others who have written a lot about it. Our Adhyatma itself was, uh, our Shastras are all sciences, right? Every Shastra is a science only because there are the same rules of logic are applied. This, you know, so it's, uh, it's because we look at science in a different way today. So we think of science as, you know, we, we have to do these many experiments, these many studies. Because remember in science also, it's not an exact thing. There's also a lot of opinions of many people which is collected together and that becomes the uh, accepted view and then that is called science. So please do not think that science is something which is very exact and uh, you know where everything is calculated and precise. It's not that. Science also has a lot of opinions. So yes. So I think as we go into our Adhyatma, we will actually become more scientific. We will become more scientific. So I don't see any distinction actually. Mera naam Vaibhav Shipor kare. Mekshikshakhu. जैसे कुछ कई लोगों ने कहा मेरा एक छोटा सा प्रश्न है उसके साथ में कुछ कहना चाहता हूँ जैसे उन्होंने कहा कि ये सब कुछ कैसे बदलेगा तो आपने अपने वक्तव्य में कहा था कि आप इंग्लिश बोलते हैं अंग्रेजी आप बोलते हैं आपने ये नहीं कहा कि आपको अंग्रेज आपको हिंदी नहीं समझती है लेकिन यहाँ जितने भी लोग आपसे सवाल पूछ रहे वो अंग्रेजी में पूछ रहे और जो लॉर्ड मेकरो के मिनट्स में लिखा हुआ है वो शायद यही लिखा हुआ है जो मैंने पढ़ा है कि यहाँ का बच्चा जब तक इंग्लिश को अंग्रेजी को अपने लिए महत्वपूर्ण मानेगा तब तक हम इनके ऊपर राज नहीं करेंगे जो हम यहाँ देखते हैं तो ये चीज बदलने के लिए कितना समय लगा एक दूसरा कितने लोग यहाँ पे अपने हस्ताक्षर हिंदी में करते हैं ये भी एक पूछना पड़ेगा क्योंकि जब तक हम हमसे नहीं शुरू करेंगे तब तक एक चीज बदलेगी नहीं इसलिए इसके लिए पचास साल और भी लगेंगे तीसरी बात आपने जो पुस्तक में लिखा हुआ है जो शायद मैंने सही सुना 
कि जो गुरुकुल थे वो राजाओं से फंडेड थे मतलब राजा उसको चलाते थे राजा उसको फंडिंग करते थे आज का जो सिस्टम है वो आइडियोलॉजिकल सिस्टम है मतलब जितने लोग स्कूल चलाते हैं वो एक पर्टिकुलर आइडियोलॉजी का होता है तो ये सब कुछ कैसे बदलेगा क्योंकि कांग्रेस की ज्यादातर स्कूलें हैं किसी पर्टिकुलर आइडियोलॉजी की स्कूलें हैं तो ये सब कुछ लाने के लिए हमें क्या करना होगा क्योंकि ये सब बदलने के लिए उतना समय हमारे पास है क्या और हम कैसे इसको बदल सकते हैं और फिर हमको भी हिंदी बोलना चाहिए इसके लिए आप क्या सुझाव दे सकते हैं सच सच ही सच कहा आपने कि मैकॉलेजी मैकॉलेजी हैज बीन वेरी सक्सेसफुल तो हम सब लोग इंग्लिश में ही पढ़े हैं और मीडियम ऑफ इंस्ट्रक्शन इंग्लिश बन गया है बट आई थिंक आपने पढ़ा होगा न्यूज़ में कि अभी इंजीनियरिंग वगैरह सब्जेक्ट्स भी अभी हिंदी में या नेटिव लैंग्वेज में रीजनल लैंग्वेज हाँ तो दैट इज़ अ वेरी वेरी गुड थिंग आई थिंक दैट विल ब्रिंग अ चेंज सो वॉट वी हैव टू डू इज आई थिंक इंजीनियरिंग अगर कर पाएंगे वो रीजनल लैंग्वेजेस में दैट विल चेंज अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स बिकॉज इंग्लिश वी शुड नो इंग्लिश एज अ लैंग्वेज सो वी शुड नो हाउ टू टॉक इन इंग्लिश बट वी शुड स्टार्ट थिंकिंग इन अवर मदर टंग मदर टंग जो भी है एंड देन वी शुड भी एबल टू रीड एंड राइट वेरी फ्लुएंटली इन आवर मदर टंग एंड वी शुड भी एबल टू गेट एन एजुकेशन इन आवर मदर टंग दैट इज द गोल बट वो कितना टाइम लगेगा इज द सेम थिंग आई मीन योर गेस इज एज गुड एज माई गेस we can only guess at what we can do is at a personal level what can we do so yes i'm trying to improve my hindi uh, and uh, in fact jab wo hindi ka translation bhi ho gaya abhi mere my for my book and i was able to make out mistakes in that even though hindi is not really my mother tongue <laughs> also sanskrit i mean i think another important thing is once we learn sanskrit then all the other languages become easier so this is one thing bahut sare questions puche aapne aur kya tha ke <laughs> आई थिंक उसका आंसर आपको भी पता ही है कि अच्छा हस्ताक्षर हस्ताक्षर हिंदी में क्यों नहीं करते हैं अंग्रेजी में करते हैं आई डोंट नो इफ दिस एनी लीगल इम्प्लीकेशन फॉर दैट आई मीन क्या करना चाहिए उसके लिए क्या हम कोई भी लैंग्वेज पे कर सकते हैं अच्छा कर सकते हैं अच्छा लेकिन अभी तो हम नहीं चेंज कर सकते ना सडनली अब जो हो गया है देखिए वो सडन नहीं आई थिंक अगर आज कोई और होते यहाँ पे तो शायद हिंदी में ही बोलते सो आई डोंट थिंक यू कैन इट जस्ट हैपन्स दैट आई एम स्पीकिंग इन इंग्लिश बट आई एम श्योर दैट यहाँ पे काफी लोग हिंदी में ही बोलते हैं और हिंदी में ही सोचते हैं दैट इज आई एम सीन द लॉन्ग यू टुक to write this book a and b this is a very fascinating subject because our heritage is humongous it's huge to do research on such a subject must have been quite a challenge so i need to know uh, how do you go about it it would be very interesting to know because you are living abroad you keep coming and going back how did you do this uh, research and how long you took for the write the book i think how long if i take the first i wrote a series of articles to usko likhne mein mujhe do i think ek mahina laga tha those were very short articles on nalanda different universities for four count fir kiya fir chhota sa ek book likha i think sab mila ke i think it's about one year if i add uh, everything and covid time was very beneficial for me that us time i was sitting and uh, ha the research aapko uh, the libraries in fact the western world mein jo universities hain america ke ऑस्टिन यूनिवर्सिटी फिर मैं लंदन में यूनिवर्सिटी ये ब्रिटिश लाइब्रेरी में बैठी थी तो अलग अलग लाइब्रेरीज में बैठ के मैंने काफ़ी बुक्स से हाँ अब अब्रॉड लेकिन वो बुक्स यहाँ भी मिलते हैं आई मीन दे आर अभी डिजिटाइज हो गया है ना तो यहाँ भी हैं वो सारे अवेलेबल हैं और यहाँ पर तो आपको मदर टंग्स में भी मिल जाएंगे सो लेर आर सो मैनी बुक्स इन कनाडा सो मैनी बुक्स इन हिंदी विच वुड हैव प्रॉबली हेल्प मी मोर बट एनी वे आई गॉट द इंग्लिश सोर्सेज फ्राम Uh, various co- college libraries and lots of them go- thanks to google so when i'm looking for something then that book comes up then i have to i'll find out where it is i'll buy it uh, whatever the pdf ya jo bhi hai i will uh, get it in whatever form and then i will use it 
so and also i spoke to a lot of experts i took suggestions from people to oral tradition ka to i had to ask a lot of people to ye karke alag alag sources se maine collect kiya so it took about a year it was definitely a lot of research aur beech mein ek aisa hua ki ek din computer crash ho ke i lost a lot of things aur usko dobara likhna pada to kya kya nahi kiya but anyway i'm glad the book is out <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I visited. I visited Nalanda. I visited a number of places. Uh, yeah. So I have seen everything. But of course, they, they will not openly tell you that what happened was because we are still in a very secular world, a very in a way place. They don't want to hurt. They think that will hurt people to tell the truth, which I don't understand. So yeah. I mean, I also travelled a lot, learned from learned from people and visited places. Okay. The last question today. so actually kya hai na this i have taken from various travelers who came to india so sometimes i just get one word mention that yahan pe uh, yahan pe viharas are there yahan pe gurukulas are there and uh, the centers of learning high centers of learning are there so i would just take the name from there and put it there so vidarbha i think was mentioned i have given the source from where nahi 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 aise nahi maybe aapko wo marathi sources mein milenge to mujhko sirf uska ye jo jitna bhi maine plot kiya hai this is from the some just a mention of it that unhone kaha ki jaise ki gokarna mein there was one british traveler he said that i can see the ruins of some university ab wo ruins nahi hai lekin he has seen some ruins of some university so i put gokarna in the map uh, so that way now i think if i want to know more i should read more of kannada literature and maybe i'll get more from there aapko yeah. bhi research karna hoga if you want to know vidarbha please find out about it in marathi thank you ma'am i now request piyush agrawal ji for vote of thanks sahana ji on the behalf of mantham team i would like to extend you a heartfelt thanks for an enlightening session your insight and knowledge have been invaluable to us and we are grateful for the opportunity to learn from you your book has been an inspiration to many of us and your dedication to preserving our cultural heritage and integrating it into modern education system has challenged us to explore and appreciate the wealth of knowledge and wisdom that our cultural heritage has to offer your research and analysis have been provided a comprehensive understanding of the ancient education system and highlighted its relevance to the modern world we would like to also express a gratitude to all the audience here for your active participation and engagement during the session audience your presence here today is a testament to your commitment to learning and exploring new ideas and your participation has been instrumental in making this event a success once again we would like to express our heartfelt thanks to you sahana ji for sharing the knowledge and expertise with us we are quite sure that your book will be looked as a turning point in the history to revamp education system of indian society your visit has been a great honor for us and we wish you all the very best for your future endeavor jai hind jai bharat